In today's video, we're going to see how we can actually move the character when we press some keys on the keyboard. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we've made the character animate by pressing keys, but now we want it to move around the scene. Now in order to do that, we have to add some code, but I highly recommend if you want to follow along to watch this playlist from the start. And I want to say thank you to the 90,000 subscribers to this channel, because you guys have been brilliant. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. We have to give credit where credit is due. Now in this beautiful video from Genka, he explains how to implement this in 3.js. Now we're going to do this with React 3 Fiber, but if you want the 3.js implementation, go and watch this video. All right, let's jump into the code. Where we left off the last time is implementing my player right in this index file. For now, we need to move it to its own component and let's call that component the player. So let's create a new file and call it player.tsx. And then go and copy all this code from here select this let's cut this out and place it over here let's rename this component to simply say player and at the very bottom i'm going to export a default player okay so now we have this being exported and you can see all the red squiggly lines. That means we need our import. So I'm going to hover over this in Visual Studio Code. Click on Quick Fix and import this. If this doesn't work, just simply import them manually. After adding my imports, this is how it should look like. Okay, but now we can see there's an error in the index file. So let's go back here and we can actually remove the unused imports that we have. And it complains because we don't have a player component. So we need to change this to our uh, player. And when we do that, we can see our player now being imported here from the component. So when we save this, technically this should be exactly the same. And we should see our character still walking as we press buttons. Okay, great. So let's go to the player component right now and see what we need to add. We already have the animations in the actions and if we press buttons, they swap out. But what we don't have is a way for us to move forward. Now, one of the ways we can do this is by adding a controller and based on the direction, we can move the player into the opposite direction. To start off, we're going to add a reference and the reference that we'll add is a control ref and it's going to be a use reference, but a type of orbit controls. Now we need to import the orbit controls and this will be imported from React 3 Dre. And now we have a reference. Let's go and hook this reference up here in the return statement. To add the orbit controls, what I am going to do is replace this and firstly wrap it with an empty fragment then add my orbit controller and the reference as well as the primitive shape. Now the reason why we need to wrap this is because with React it only can export one item at a time. And we have a reference to this orbit controller. The other reference that we'll need is also to the camera. And how do we get access to the camera? Well we can use the use3 hook and specify that the state needs to give us back the state.camera. So now we have access to the orbit controller through our reference as well as the camera. And later on, we will use this to calculate in what direction the character should be moving in. Next, we have to do some work in the game loop. Now, I highly recommend as you code along, always go to your browser and make sure that you have not broken anything, especially if you are not used to coding. Okay, let's go back. So for the game loop, React 3 Fiber gives us this awesome hook and it's called use frame. Now we can use this use frame and it is a function. 
where we have access to the state as well as delta time. And this delta time we're going to use inside of this function as well. Now what needs to happen? Well the first thing that we need to determine is if this character is walking or running then we need to do something because if it's walking or running it needs to move in some direction. Now how do we check if the character is walking or running? Well we do have this current action string that we have at the top level and we can totally use that. So we can check if the current action is equal to running or if the current action is equal to walking. And only then we get to do something. Now that something is that we want to move the character. So technically what we can say is model.scene.position.x should be plus equals to 0 0.1. So every time that we are walking or running we want to move the character's x position by 0 0.1. If we refresh our application and we click on W, we can see the character is moving. But it's not moving in the right direction. And that's what we need to determine now. But it is indeed moving if I press keys, but it will forever move in the X position. So how do we now work out the direction that the character needs to move in? Well, for that we're going to make use of maths. Now I don't want to discourage you, so what I will do instead is I'll add each section what we need and explain it. The first thing that we'll need is a function in here, which is basically going to determine the angle, specifically the Y angle of the camera in relation to the player. Essentially to get the camera's Y angle in radians, we can use this function and we can minus the camera's position X by the model's position X, as well as the Z and the model Z. Just think about this, returning the radians that we're going to use in a next step. For the next step, we need the diagonal movement offset when we press the forward, backwards, left or right keys. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to add a function here at the top. Now I'm just going to pause for a brief second so that you can type this out. I know. This might be a lot and you might hate me right now, but type it out, learn how to code, and I promise you, you'll get used to typing these functions out quicker. Great, so I hope you had some coffee after typing out this big function, but let's explain what it does. So basically, it's going to get an offset based on a parameter, which is going to be our center, so to speak, or the starting point. And every time we press uh, a key such as forward, we're going to do some if else checks to make sure if we are pressing forward and left, what should the offset be? And this is what we'll be returning. Think of this function as if I press forward, I want to move forward. If I press forward and left, I want to move diagonally. And that's all it does. And it does it for all the angles. So let's go and use it in our next step right after the angle y camera direction function add your directional movement angle offset by using that function this will give us a new offset and remember use frame runs in a loop that's why it's important to get these pieces of information as the loop runs and executes and we're going to pass the forward backwards left and right we are almost there and so close so bear with me the next thing that we need is a few variables so we can keep track. So we're going to add these here at the top. This is going to be a walk direction, a rotate angle, a rotate quaternion, as well as the camera's target. This is going to be some vectors and we need to implement the rotate angle next. Remember to add your imports, so I'm going to add three up here. And then let's go down to continue. Right after the new direction offset, let's add this piece of code. At this point, we want to rotate our model. So we're going to set the rotate quaternions variable to set from axis angle. And we'll use the current rotate angle 
and then we'll use this function here at the top plus the new directions offset to position our character towards the right angle and on this line we do so and now finally we get to calculate the walk direction so to calculate the walk direction you can add this and essentially we're going to pass a vector 3 to the get world direction of the camera we're going to have it set to 0 then we'll normalize the direction and then finally we'll apply the new rotate angle as well as the new direction set and now all that's left to do is to add some velocity in that direction in order to add a velocity to the character's move direction we need to first determine the velocity and how do we do that well we know that we have a running animation and if a character is running we most likely want to push it in that direction faster to determine how fast we have a ternary check here checking if it's running or not if it is running the velocity will be set to 10 else it will be set to 5 now we can play around with these parameters to make it walk slower or faster and now we can actually add this velocity to the character so what we'll do is we'll determine an x as well as a z and we'll take that walk direction x times it by the velocity as well as the delta time and the exact same for the z and then we'll simply add this to the positions of the model now currently this will move the model but not update the camera so we need a tiny function for that we can add this function here right below our references and this is the function it will basically update the camera's target and make the camera point to it so basically we get the camera's position we update the targets based on the model and here for the y we just increase it based on the model height so that the camera has a nice height that it looks at the at the actual model and then we check if the controller is there and we update that target so lastly we can now just use this function so right here at the bottom we can call update the camera target and pass it in the x as well as the z save this and let's go and see it looks like we have a small error and it's because it can't find the vector 3 so instead of importing just 3 let's import everything from 3 save this and let's go back so here's our character and if we now walk you realize that oh my goodness it is working however the character seems to be walking in the opposite directions if I move backwards it is moving backwards but we would like the character to walk towards us if we press W it does the opposite and there is a quick fix for this if you also have the same issue the thing that you can do is go to blender and select the model then all you need to do is rotate this 180 and now that the character is facing the other way let's go ahead and select it click on export and the glb file on desktop we're going to export this as our player and then make sure that the include only is selected and exported back in the code we get to replace the player so replace the player model save this go back to the application and let's refresh and success we can now run around we can run towards us walk towards us walk away from us and it's pretty pretty cool we can even jump now i really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial series with me and if you did then please leave this video series a like i really appreciate that it really helps my channel a lot and also subscribe because this is just the beginning of our metaverse build and as always ladies and gentlemen i hope you have a fantastic day i'll see you in the next video Cheers for now.